Today, I'm sharing 10 things you need to know before buying a pair of jeans. Hi ladies, it's Erin and welcome back to my channel. My mission through my channel to help you look like the very best version of yourself each and every day. One of the ways we're gonna do that today is by dissecting jeans. I am going to break down in 10 easy to understand tips all of the things that you should know before buying a pair of jeans. I think that these tips are life-changing. I think they're incredibly important. And I think it's going to be one of those videos that you want to refer back to again and again. Before I dive into the tips, I just wanted to say that for those of you who have additional questions, as always, you can comment below, but I've also started a private Facebook group called The Hive, The Busby Style Hive, and that's where you can ask those very pointed questions and get answers almost immediately from either your peers, my team, myself, or all of the above. It has been incredible. I am so excited with how The Hive is shaping up and how the community is growing. So hope to see you there in the Busby Style Hive. Okay, now let's get started with the tips. First, I wanna talk about the rise of your jeans. Basically, we're gonna break it down into three categories. There's low rise, mid rise, high rise. When you're shopping online, for every individual product, there is usually a product description. If you expand that description or click on that description, you can usually see how long the rises of the jeans. This is very important again, because you wanna know if it's low, medium, or high. So a seven inch rise is very low. I don't own any low rise jeans anymore. Since I became a mom, I stopped buying them. Mid rise is a much happier rise for me and probably for most of you. That is an eight to nine inch rise on your jeans. The mid-rise jeans usually sit above the hip bone and below the belly button. Then you have high-rise jeans. Those are nine, 10, and now I'm seeing even 11. So it's anywhere from nine up. These are the ones that are gonna sit at the belly button or even higher. The advantage of high-rise jeans is that they will eliminate any excess skin. They'll just suck it right up, or any little extra weight that you're carrying around the middle, sometimes referred to as the muffin top. So even me that has loose baby skin and I'm going through menopause and I got a little extra something in the middle, if I wear mid-rise, I have that effect. Like the skin will hang over. It just doesn't look as smooth on your clothes. And that's why I really prefer high rise. It makes me feel more secure, like everything's just really in place. And then also I like that it's smooth under clothes. Some of you have mentioned, I don't like high rise because I'm really short waisted. And when I wear high rise jeans, it looks like I have no torso. And that can be very true. In that case, all you're going to do is instead of tucking your shirt, you're going to leave it untucked. That's going to create more proportion for your upper and lower bodies. So you gotta pay attention to the rise, number one. Number two is inseam length. And you can actually measure or have somebody help you at home measure your inseam length. And that is the length from, for lack of a better word, your crotch on the inside down to the floor. Now for ankle length jeans, you're gonna wanna go to maybe like your ankle bone. But for more boot cut straight and flared leg jeans, you're gonna wanna go to about half three quarters inch off the ground. That inseam length is really important, especially if you have particularly long legs or particularly short legs like me. You can cuff a jean that's longer, like this pair by Citizens of Humanity. I love this pair of jeans, it's so flattering, but they are like literally five inches too long on me, which is why I always recommend Citizens of Humanity for tall women. Okay, next we're gonna dive into the back side of the jeans, and this is one of those areas where maybe you don't pay as much attention as you should be paying attention to because it's a little bit harder to see what's going on back there, but this is a really key part of your jeans and we're gonna break it down. It's almost like three separate categories. So the first is you want high pockets. What do I mean by high pockets? If the pockets are placed high on the bum, it will make your bum look more lifted, which is what we want. I don't know anybody who wants a droopy butt, anyone. I think we can all agree that a lifted bum is better, right? So those high pockets will combat gravity and lift everything up, that is one. The other part of that puzzle is that the pockets need to be small, small and high. When you have big long pockets that are not placed high, your butt is going to look bigger. And that means you want a little space between the smile line of your butt, that's where your leg and your butt meet, and the bottom of the pocket, maybe like two to three inches, that's the sweet spot. But you also want some space between the pockets. And here's where there's a fine line. You don't want too much space between the pockets because then it looks like your butt is wider. 
but if you have a little space between the pockets, it really makes your butt look nice and round and lovely and lifted and good. So I would think like three inches between the two pockets, somewhere in that zone, maybe two to three inches, would be the sweet spot. The next thing you need to know before buying a pair of jeans has to do with quality. I'm gonna go through a couple of quality control checks that you can do when you're looking at those jeans in the store. The first is the zipper. The industry standard or the gold standard for a zipper is a YKK zipper. Who knew? I found that one out from some research. So the YKK zipper is the best and the industry standard. If the zipper like on this pair by Vici Dolls is not YKK, you just know the details of the jean are not going to be as high quality or high end. And so they're not going to last as long. They're not going to wash and wear as long and they are more likely to malfunction or break. Is this a game changer? Probably not, but it's just another detail you can be on the lookout for. The next quality detail I wanted to bring to your attention that you can take a look at is when you go to the bottom of the jeans and you turn it inside out, look at the two seams. One of the seams should look like this guy, sort of like railroad tracks on two sides. That's the sign of a really long lasting, high quality pair of jeans. If it does not have the two railroad tracks, it just has one seam, one small skinnier seam, that is not as high quality. They're more likely to fray. They're more likely to fall apart. They're not gonna wash and wear as well. They're probably not gonna retain their shape as well. That is one of the key differences when you spend like $50 on a pair of jeans versus $200 on a pair of jeans. The construction, okay? And the construction is something you may not necessarily notice until you pay attention to those small details. So turn the ankle of the jean inside out or the bottom of the jean inside out, take a look at those seams and you'll know pretty quickly whether it's a well-made pair of jeans or not. I wanna get back to the zipper for a minute. So I talked about that YKK zipper being the one to look for. I also wanna address zipper length. And this is a tip I uncovered from another YouTuber whose channel is Alexandra's Girly Talk. And so she highlighted and was talking about the zipper length, the actual length of the zipper. So basically when you have a pair of jeans where the zipper is short, the zipper length is short, and there's a lot of space between the bottom of the zipper and the actual crotch of the jean, what happens is unfortunately you can have that effect where the jeans can create a wedgie in the front. We know what that's called and it's not a pleasant name and it's not a pleasant experience. In order to avoid that, you can look for zippers in the front that have a longer length with almost no space or very little space between the bottom of the zipper and the actual crotch of the jeans. Next, I wanna talk about the details of the jean a little bit more and specifically the wash and the fading of the jean. So a lot of jeans are distressed and stressing you know, that isn't really a game changer in terms of how a pair of jeans is going to fit or flatter you. But the fading, that's when there's a part of the jean that is lighter than another part. The denim is faded in spots. And sometimes in the front of the jeans that can look like cat whiskers. That's why I call it whiskering. So the fading actually will make that area of your body larger. So if you put fading on your bum, for example, that can make your bum look bigger. If you put fading on your legs, it's going to make your legs look bigger. There are exceptions where this actually works in your favor, like with my all-time favorite pair of jeans by Rag & Bone. These are called the Justine. They stopped making them. I have no idea why. I love them so much. But this pair of jeans you can see is faded all down the middle of the leg. And then along the edges of the jean, it's very dark. So that creates this very slimming effect. So the reason I'm telling you this is because I want you to pay attention to the wash of the jean and the fading of the jean and the placement of the fading. Is the placement favorable for what you want to do? Does it maximize your assets? Pun intended. <laughs> or is it not serving you and not doing you any favors. You have to make that call, but just think about it in the back of your mind. Where is the fading on these jeans? So that leads me to my next point. It's one of those things that has to be said again and again and again. It is so worth repeating, and that is dark wash jeans are the most slimming. So when you're looking for a pair of jeans, look for dark wash, minimal fading, minimal details, no contrasting stitching, no embroidery, no embellishment. You want clean, classic, dark wash, 
that will be incredibly elongating and slimming. And you can see right here the difference between the dark wash jean and maybe a light blue wash. I happen to love light blue. I think they're fun. I own a bunch of them, but are they the most slimming and elongating? Absolutely not. And you can see it right here. This is not trickery. You could see it with your own eyes and make your own decision. And the last thing you need to know before buying your pair of jeans is I want you to understand silhouette and what silhouette works best for your body. I can probably do another whole separate video about this, like which silhouette works for which body type. And actually that's a great idea. I probably should do that. But essentially you need to understand what accentuates your body the best. It doesn't have to be the trendiest thing. Like if skinny jeans aren't your thing because you have bigger hips, butt, and thighs and you don't want to accentuate them because that's what skinny jeans do. It creates that ice cream cone effect and really accentuates the hips, butt, and thighs. Don't wear skinny jeans. Wear boot cut jeans, wear straight leg jeans, wear flare jeans. Now flare jeans or wide leg jeans are definitely going to balance out curves. They're gonna balance out hips, butt, and thighs. So maybe you wanna stick with that silhouette. So there's nothing saying you have to wear specific styles of jeans just because they're in style. Wear what works best for your body. And I feel like that's very freeing. It's freeing for me when I say it and hopefully it's freeing for you guys to hear it. You never have to wear what's in style or on trend. Wear what fits and flatters you, what fits and flatters your body, what makes you feel the most confident. Because in your jeans, you wear them like at least once a week, you gotta feel like a million bucks. So go ahead and pay attention to these smaller details. Find the jeans that really fit and flatter you the best. Take the time, make the time, because it will be well worth it and something that you wear again and again and again. And when you're calculating like whether I should buy the $50 pair of jeans or the $200 jeans, just remember how often you wear them. One last bonus tip I wanted to share with you guys. There are certain designers and certain brands that design jeans for certain body types. I did a blog post recently. I'm gonna put a link to it below, but make sure you go check that blog post where I talk about all my favorite brands for different size types, like my favorite brands for plus, my favorite brands for curvy, my favorite brands for petite, my favorite brands for tall. So be sure you check that out so you have that base because once you find the brands that really work well for your body, like stick with that. You don't have to reinvent the wheel, you know? I buy the same brands over and over and over again because I know they work best for me. And that's what you should do. Save yourself the time and anguish and find those go-to designers and stick with those designers. <laughs> okay, you guys, let me know if you have any questions. Just comment below. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you like this video and want to see more like it. I'll see you next time. Bye.